So I recently posted a micro video on Instagram and TikTok that had to do with Florida Governor DeSantis and gas stoves. It's actually a short that I made from the last climate recap if you're curious. And let me just say that the gas stove lovers on Instagram found it and sounded off in the comment section. I thought I'd respond to some of the comments that I read and the conversations I had because I've heard literally every single argument over and over again. None of them were original. I'm so sorry to say. Now, if you think air pollution was made up by the government or that the entire international clean energy transition is a plot by China because you don't trust a single think tank that assisted China in developing a clean energy roadmap five years ago, you're probably not my target audience, <laughs> but a lot of the comments in general fit into similar themes that I've heard over and over again, and so I thought that I would talk about what I noticed. Hey y'all, it's Becky here from The Becca Sphere, where we talk about the multifaceted topic that is climate change. If you consider it an important issue and you want to keep track of it, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button below and ring the bell so you don't miss every single time I post. Now let's dive into the themes I noticed from the pro gas lovers on Instagram and uh, see if we can learn anything from this sort of pattern. So one theme that I noticed is that people will talk about clean energy flaws without mentioning how it compares to the alternative, which is fossil fuels, like how critical mineral mining is bad for the environment or how wind turbine blades are hard to dispose of. Okay, well, have you seen the wastewater facilities in Colorado from the gas production or coal mines in South Africa or air pollution in New Delhi or oil spills in Peru? It's just disingenuous to look at the problems with the new technology without comparing them to what they'd be replacing. The second theme is when people talk about the problems of clean energy as if people have never considered them before. Like, it's a gotcha moment. China controlling a lot of the industry? We know that. It's an international problem. Australia and the US already formed an alliance to reduce China's control in the industry. Meanwhile, there are many people that wake up every single day to make batteries that require less critical minerals or to create a recycling industry so that we don't throw away everything into landfill for the rest of eternity. These are problems that are very much fixable and we should strive to do better rather than stick to fossil fuel companies that ignore their own environmental assessments. We also shouldn't expect carbon capture and storage to pick up so much slack that we can keep going with fossil fuels. That technology is way less proven than the other technologies that are part of the clean energy transition. So the scenario of relying so heavily on CCS is a way higher risk than just progressing to clean energy. Related to that is the conversation of blackouts, which honestly is probably the best argument for not switching from gas to electric. I totally hear you on this one. I live in California where PG&E shuts off our power all the time. Our infrastructure in this country sucks, and that's a totally fair concern to have. But I think that's more of an argument that we should hold governments and utility companies accountable for fixing our infrastructure rather than it's an argument against electrification per se. Like why should we settle for a shitty grid that's forcing us to stick with appliances that make us sick? That just doesn't make sense to me. The third theme I wanna to touch on has to do with the fear that people have towards losing their ability to choose one technology over the other. The thing is, you've never really had that free choice to begin with, and that's mainly due to gigantic corporations making the decisions for you based on what's in their best interest to make a profit. That's true for the gas industry, which has done a very extensive job of paying for advertising campaigns and lobbying government officials to keep you from having all the information and opportunities to make the best decision for you and your family. It also includes utility companies avoiding needed repairs and improvements despite the fact that you give them a chunk of your income every single month. Why are we letting them mow us over like that and are instead arguing amongst ourselves? I hate to say it, but if you're supporting the fossil fuel industry, you're kind of backing an anti-competitive industry instead of supporting a movement that's already spurred a lot of cool innovation. And to be clear, that's not me accusing any individual person of being funded by the fossil fuel industry just because they made a pro-gas comment in my post. I've been accused of accusing that, which is weird. I am simply stating that there's a lot more evidence to support that the fossil fuel industry has likely influenced the media you consume, the politicians you like, and the policies that you vote on. There is way more evidence of that than there is of any other entity supporting the clean energy transition because frankly, if there was, then we would have moved a lot faster on the clean energy transition a long time ago. I think there's a lot of fear around switching to any new form of energy or technology in general, and I totally hear you on that. Innovation can be scary, okay? 
It's not smooth all the time for sure. But the reason why I've heard all of these arguments people in the comment section have said before is because these are the same arguments that people have been saying for literal decades. Except back then we didn't have as good of an understanding about how bad gas was for your environmental or public health. And frankly, the electric stoves back then were way worse because induction stoves and electric stoves are not the same thing, by the way. But now our technology has improved and our understanding of our options has grown. So why are we still saying these arguments again? I mean, when we moved from cooking with wood to cooking with gas, there wasn't a major uproar like there is this time. It was just recognized as a technological improvement. Honestly, the reason why is because the wood industry wasn't as wealthy or organized as the fossil fuel industry. That's at the heart of all of this. That is like the main takeaway. Those companies spent a lot of money to this day to make gas a part of human existence, and they have been very successful at it. At the end of the day, a stove is just an appliance, a piece of the bigger puzzle. If you don't want to switch out of a gas stove because you love to cook with it so much, okay, fine. But if you genuinely want to help reduce air pollution and also reduce your monthly energy bill, at least consider like switching to a heat pump instead to regulate your home's temperature. There's actually subsidy money from the Inflation Reduction Act if you want to do that, which I will link more information about down below. And if you're pissed off about certain problems with the clean energy movement that are keeping you from being able to electrify your home or take care of your family, then get loud about those things and instead of just saying that we can't do any of the transition at all. Demand for utility companies to bury power lines and buy new infrastructure pieces like they're supposed to. These are things that affect all of us that we should come together on instead of letting imperfections with the new technology keep us from progressing as a society. Perfection is the death of progress. So those are my thoughts. I'm not necessarily gonna make a habit of responding to commenters all the time, but you caught me on a good day. So respectfully, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Remember to talk about the climate crisis every single day and to support your local news organizations. Thank you so much to the people on Patreon who helped support me and my fur baby Rue. A special shout out to the climate confident and courageous David H, Norman Anal, Greg H, Paul B, Phil Plasma, Dan Morton, Dean Chris, Nate, Specker, Bree C, Climate Teacher John J, Deanne, Steve, Kevin Morton, and SKP Joe Corsgold. I greatly appreciate your support of $5 or more. If you would like to support the Becca Sphere, please check out the Patreon and buy me a coffee links in the description below for reoccurring or one-time payments. Bye for now.